Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the show. I know it's been a few days since you guys last saw me, but it is so good to be back to CSGO News. So I'm now 32 years old. That's the last time we'll talk about my birthday, but thank you all for the birthday wishes. It was a great weekend. Hope you guys had one too, but some great stories, even better stories happening over the course of the past weekend, which makes it so fun to come back to CSGO News. And let's hop into the first story, guys, all about Cloud9 and their newest roster going forward. Now, of course, E-League Premier is this weekend, so a huge $1 million tournament over there, and Cloud9 has announced two of its next members, and they will be kind of no surprise, we actually have Sticko still going to be a stand in for their team, as well as Fnatic. Golden himself has been announced. So it was kind of speculation a couple of days ago. It's now been officially announced, guys. Cloud9's newest roster will, of course, feature Sticko and Golden. And as you guys can expect, it will be Golden taking over the IGO role. And we have seen Tark officially go to MIBR, MIBR's roster. And of course, I did miss that the day I did leave. So no big surprises there with Tark's official announcement. No real surprise with Cloud9's newest roster. But this does not mean it's going to be the major roster we see come September for the Face It Major. And the list starts with MoTV. He actually had the first tweet this morning. No one was really sure if he was joking or not. I'm pretty sure he was very serious. He also made sure to offer as well that his cut of the sticker money would go to charity. So kind of a, an awesome notion there. He has stood in for teams in the past and of course he does have some pretty decent skill compared to North American players out there. Although he probably wouldn't be the team's first choice, he made sure to offer himself as a stand-in for Cloud9. Then we actually had Greyhound and UK member known as Big Dick Stacy. If you guys remember his his legendary days, he has actually made kind of a, a not less of a footprint over the past few months. Been definitely less, a less quiet though on Twitter. He definitely made some noise though today as he did tweet out this offering himself up as well and the sticker cut money would definitely go to him it would not go to charity but at least he's being honest with all of us and the, and the list does go on and on we also had shroud even talk on stream about potential of him and nothing coming back although he was obviously joking about this and cloud nine would probably not do it you can't deny the fact that although it might be a bit sad because they're not the the csgo players they once were the marketing tactic or promotion of this could be astounding i know a lot of people out there of course myself included would buy nothing stickers would buy shroud stickers knowing very likely they would not come back to any major Major in the future, especially if Cloud9 do not uh, do too well in this major. Of course, they are guaranteed a spot with our current system in the next major qualifier anyway. Um, but either way, it's going to be cool to see what happens with Cloud9. We also had further offers out there and a joke uh, from Swag himself. But here is Shroud actually saying on, as well on stream that it could be him and nothing. Although again, just to preface, it's most likely a joke. Shroud, are you standing for C9 in this major? Yeah. See you there, dude. C9 should just put a PR stun out, Secure you know? Bomb. And they should just bring like me and Jordan back. Then me, Jordan, Skadoodle, Tim, Rush. Just bring it back for the major. Fuck it, who cares? And finally, after almost two years of scams, I remember actually talking about this almost two years ago, and then again about, uh, I think it was six to eight months ago, the Motor2K fake account controversy. We've had so many people in the past that we've had to report on fake Twitter accounts, fake Instagram accounts, Facebook accounts, Twitter being the most common of them, and there's been countless scams ever since then. We've had Motor2K's underscore, Motor underscore 2K's, a bunch of different usernames have tried to fake this guy's account, and I can now officially announce to all of you guys, I DM'd him very shortly, and it's been confirmed on his own Twitter, which I will link down below, the real Motor2K has gone ahead and made himself a Twitter to actually avoid other people getting scammed. Now, it's also kind of cool to see as well on his Twitter, not only does he confirm his identity of owning his Steam account and other things as well, he does actually have some really cool videos on his Twitter showcasing, of course, his LA and other lifestyles, which, uh, of course, match up with his donations. He is a bit of a wealthier guy, if you don't know who Motor2K is, very well known for donating to several streamers in the past, and so this is the real Motor2K account, as far as we know, uh, pretty much 100% confirmed. I will link it down below. Therefore, no one else should ever get scammed again if you watch this video the real one is linked down below motor 2k has come out and made an official twitter just to avoid all the scams out there which is pretty cool to see he finally responded to this and did an amazing thing and in huge news for the asian csgo scene actually right on time for the asian minor going on tomorrow for Tai Lu. i'm speaking of Tai Lu's former member now back in their starting roster after dealing with an injury after falling off a segway that is captain mo just over two months ago he fell off his segway and managed to fracture part of his femur so he is amazingly back and i'm not really sure if he's actually fully recovered or the team obviously he needs him. He was one of their star players before his injury, so I'm not really sure if his injury has now fully gone away, or they need him right on time for the minor, which they do compete in as of tomorrow. So it's going to be cool to see uh, if they do actually compete very well with him back in the lineup. I'm not sure if that femur issue will, of course, cause him any discomfort, but it's great to see Captain Mo now back in the active Ty Lu roster, and of course, the stand-in for him, AE, is now back on the bench. We'll see if Ty Lu and Captain Mo can actually lead themselves back to the major qualifier once again, and if we can have a repeat back-to-back -back majors with Ty Lu stickers. Now, also, speaking of the Asian minor, 
minor though we've had a first a first time thing happen in CSGO ever and that is a Japanese team making the minor without any of us really noticing it they were actually behind the radar until today and that is actually team scars absolute it's been shortened down to SC absolute as they updated they actually upset a few of the Asian teams out there one was in a best of one against renegades and they also went on to beat VG flash in a best of one and also in a decider best of three to make the playoffs at the Asian minor that does mean in fact they are now one step closer they're already top four at the Asian minor and top two will go to the major qualifier they are already the farthest team ever in Japanese history of CSGO to actually go in the major system and they are now one step closer to actually making it to the major itself and having the first ever Japanese team stickers so that was amazing to see now I do want to clarify as well of course with the Asian scene we've seen kind of the downgrade of their talent ever since the original VG Zyber Zen and also of course the Tyloo days where they when they first burst on the scene no one could really keep up with their play styles but even then we could see a brand new team at the major qualifier once again will this be last year's QBF will they try and make a stunning run we have to see who actually qualifies out of that region as Renegades did actually luckily make it though to the playoffs themselves after losing these guys and of course many of us know that Renegades has had that easier run throughout the Asian scene for for a couple years running now so if they don't make it out of the Asian minor now this time there's definitely gonna be some backlash coming but will we see our first ever Japanese team at a major I am crossing my fingers it could be a very cool thing to see and as well kind of a, I guess you could say a start to the rise of that scene of course if you're a younger Asian player and you see a team like that making the major qualifier it can be very inspirational so cross your fingers and we'll see if scars absolute can make the major qualifier and very last in today's episode of CSK News I do apologize for a short episode I will be back probably tomorrow with some better, better things out there I've been talking to Wardell if you guys did see him he actually had his alt account which is now his main account overwatch band I've been talking to him I'm trying to gather some clips as to why that was so that'll be in tomorrow's story for all of you Wardell fans out there but even more importantly guys in our last story today we do have unfortunately enough the rising team of June after winning DreamHack Summer Open that was actually the Imperial unfortunately enough one of their better players and actually most likely their best player that's an Esperanto who is the MVP of DreamHack Summer the event they won is apparently stepping back from the roster and most likely moving on from the team permanently both the team and him have actually now posted twit longers to give you guys a TLDR of the whole situation pretty much Esperanto was not getting along with Crystal who is the team's newest addition now although the team has done pretty decently ever since he did join especially at their latest event the Zotac Cup as well I know they kind of I think I was top four finish not what they expected but they're still beating out teams constantly teams like Gambit XCOM Windigo which again are not probably your your sequential teams you would think of but they're still generally top 30 teams and this team themselves have actually broken the top 30 over the past two months and it has been as high I think I believe somewhere near the top 25 and again a team who won DreamHack Summer Open they have now lost their best player in Esperanto I'll link their twit longers down below if you guys want to read on the situation but pretty much it just seems the team is not getting along and they all agreed to actually bench their best player so now it comes into mind with Crystal being the team the team member they did choose the real question is what is now more important to a team a star IGL or a star player as always guys I hope you all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News it is so good to be back so refreshing to be back hope you guys all enjoy feel free to leave a comment down below and also for all of you guys who watch the videos all the way to the end here's a hint at the project I've been working on now tomorrow or sometime soon I'm gonna release to you guys a, a video explaining what I'll be doing for my esports job um, but here's a, de a dead direct hint at what I'll be doing exactly and then of course next week I'll actually start promoting what I'll be doing and give you guys the full full details so video coming soon on some pre preliminary details about what I'll be doing and then next week guys is the week I can guarantee it but I'll be showing you guys what exactly I'll be doing in the future and I would love to have all of you guys' help and hopefully support but anyway here's that clip thank you all for watching guys Jake here okay bye six esports CSGO Dota 2 Fortnite League of Legends Overwatch and Rocket League so welcome to the show if you guys are a new viewer make sure to subscribe for more content in the future and as always let's get into it